welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be the first episode of my new ear stretching series. Um, I mentioned in two videos ago, I believe it was, that I wanted to redo my original uh, ear stretching video, or like all about stretching your ears or whatever I called it, that I wanted to redo it in a series so that the video isn't super long and it's not super drawn out and it's not just me, you know, rambling about nothing. <laughs> so today's video is going to be the basics of ear stretching. I'm going to be talking about um, terminology, um, the different types of materials, what's safe for a fresh stretch and what's not safe for your ears. Um, also going to be talking about like healing periods and you know just stuff like that. Um, kind of like the basics. Uh, to some people who are experienced stretchers, if you know you're watching this video, um, you'll probably be like, well, yeah, a lot of this stuff is like, you know, common sense, blah, blah, blah. Um, this video mostly is just for people who don't know anything about ear stretching and they want to start stretching their ears, but they don't know much and they're like trying to do research about it. So that's what this video is for. So I'm just going to get into it. So what is ear stretching? Ear stretching is when you have a little itty bitty tiny hole in your ear and you want to make it larger. Um, one of the first things, if your ears aren't pierced and you want to start stretching them, you should go to a reputable, reputable piercing shop or tattoo shop. You know, uh, most of them I feel like are, you know, intertwined, you know, tattoo places, do piercings and stuff. So you should never be pierced with a gun. I My ears were pierced with a gun a long time ago when I was very uneducated and stupid, but I can't take that back now. So you should never get pierced with a gun because they are unable to be sanitized and they're basically the people who use piercing guns are not educated in piercing they literally watch like a five minute video about how to click a thing and you know pierce people's ears so you want to get them, your ears pierced with a hollow needle at a piercing shop um a hollow needle will create a nice slit in your ear and it'll it's sharp enough where it'll you know cut and a piercing gun will force itself through so it's not making a nice clean cut it forces itself through your ear so it's blunt force trauma to your ears and it's not good for them so you know if you if you don't have your ears pierced get them pierced with a needle it's also important to take your time while stretching your ears stretching your ears is a process you know slow and steady wins the race slow and steady gets big earlobes so um, it's important to wait about a month or two in between each stretch. Um, some people will have to wait longer. Everybody's ears are different. Everybody's skin is has a different elasticity. So some people can stretch faster than others. Some other people might be stuck at sizes for a few months. Um, I could stretch my ears every month, but when I got to bigger sizes, I had to, you know, wait longer. It's also important to never skip sizes. No matter how small your ears are, you do not want to skip sizes. Um, if you are using the taper, if you're using tapers and you, you know, you're stretching like every other day or something, you can get a blowout and blowouts are not fun. Blowouts are basically when you force a piece of jewelry through and skin like comes out, is like pushed out the back and it just kind of is like hanging there. Blowouts are not good. <laughs> now I'm going to be talking about the different types of materials. You can see my little puppy in the background. Um, so the different types of materials, there's stone, wood, and glass. Those are the organics. Um, stone and glass are really good for your ears. They will not stick to your ears in a fresh stretch. They're safe for fresh stretching, um, except wood. Wood's not good for a fresh stretch, but stone and glass are really, really good. Um, wood is good for healed stretches, but it is porous, so it is a little difficult to clean. Um, but they are good for after, you know, you have a healed stretch. Um, the next, there's metals, there's steel, there's different types of steel, different, you know, like grades, there's implant grade steels and like titanium and stuff like that. I'm not a professional, so I don't really know the, you know, all the stuff about like the different types of 
uh, steels, but I do know that 316L is the lowest, is a lower grade steel, um, and it's probably the most common in cheaper jewelry. So some people can have sensitivities to 316L. Um, and if you do, when it comes to sensitivities to different types of materials, if you put a plug in or you put, you know, an eyelet in and your ear starts to feel funny, um, like within a few minutes or even immediately, take it out because you could have a sensitivity to that type of material. Then there is acrylic and silicone. Neither of these are good for your ears in the long run. They shouldn't be worn for long periods of time because acrylic and silicone kind of the plastic materials are porous and if they're heated up inside your ear like if you're wearing them on like a hot day or just in general if acrylic heats up it can release toxins into your ears so you do not want to wear that in a fresh stretch you should not be um, stretching with acrylic with acrylic tapers or you know anything like that you do not want and if you stretch with silicone which is basically silicone's like a rubbery kind of material I don't have any to show you um, but those are also not good to stretch with. Some people will like fold up a plug, a silicone plug, put it in their ear and let it expand. That's not good. That stretches your ear way too fast. And if you stretch like that, you can also have the silicone plug can actually grow to your ear and like attach itself. So then you'd have to get it cut out or you'd have to like rip it out and it's just damaged to your ears and you do not want to do that. Um, as far as I know, there is only one brand that makes silicone plugs that are safe to wear in your ear, and that is Chaos Software. I think their website's chaossoftware.com. Um, I'll just I'll link it below if you're interested in them. Um, some people like to sleep in silicone. Um, I don't have any silicone. I just sleep with my um, steel tunnels in, so, you know, um... But, you know, some people like to sleep in silicone because it is comfier and because it is squishy. So now for terminology. Um, I am going to be talking about, like, what the difference is, what you can and can't call them, or what you shouldn't call them. Um, so, there are different types of jewelry. Um, I am wearing a an eyelet, or some people call them tunnels, either one I... Uh, some people are Nazis about calling um, eyelets tunnels. I never really cared. Um, so basically an eyelet is just, it's hollow. You can like, you know, stick things through. And then a plug is a solid material like this. You know, it's, you can't stick your finger through it. So that's the difference between those. Um, there are also hangers. Um, once again, I don't have any to show you because I'm not a fan of hangers. Um, but hangers are basically like, at least from what I've seen, I've seen them a lot at like Hot Topic and Spencer's. Um, I'm sure they're sold, you know, other places. Um, hangers are basically just like those spirally things where it, some people use these to stretch. Um, they're basically, they get thinner and then they get thicker as they go through the spiral. So it's kind of like a taper. Um, and then, let's see, there's also teardrop shapes. Um, I personally, I don't like teardrop shape. I think it looks ridiculous and hard to put in, so. But basically, it literally looks like what it's called. It's just a teardrop shape like this. You know, just teardrop shape. They look difficult. I'm not a fan of them. You know. Um, and then the difference between single, I'm sorry if I keep like looking down, I have notes. Um, and then the difference between single flare and double flare, um, I've seen these on a lot of ear stretching videos. Um, some people don't know what the difference between single flare and double flare is. So double flare is where there are two flares, two sides, so you can see like this, this is the flare, so this is double flare, there's two flares on each side. And then single flared, there's a flare on this side, but then this side is flat. And these single flares are held with O-rings. This is just an O-ring, just goes around like that. And that's how your jewelry is held in your ear. Um, with double flared, you don't need O-rings because the two flares will keep it in your ear. Now, for one of my biggest pet peeves is when people call them gauges. Um, they are not called gauges. The only reason that people call them gauges is because they are measured in a gauge 
in certain sizes. So double zero and under, everything is measured in a gauge, and then everything above that is measured in inches or a fraction of an inch. So like um, an inch, an inch and a half, etc. And then gauge sizes would be like two gauge, four gauge, six gauge, ten gauge, you know, stuff like that. Um, I wasn't going in any particular order, but that's why some people call them gauges. Um, they are not called gauges. Um, they are called plugs or eyelets, or you could just say stretched ears, stretched lobes. Um, uh, hey, I like your jewelry. Like, <laughs> um, they are not called gauges. One of my biggest pet peeves is when people have stretched ears. Their ear, their earlobes are stretched, and they still refer to them as gauges. Um, that's just one of my biggest pet peeves in the modified world. Is <laughs> I know it's petty. Some people will think I'm petty for thinking that, but it's the truth. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. So that is it for this episode of my new ear stretching series. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe if you did. Um, my next episode will be about tapers. What are tapers? How to use them? Stuff like that. So thank you for watching. Subscribe if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!